Morning folks. Well, we've had a nice breakfast of blueberry pancakes and bacon. Absolutely delicious and that hopefully will uh, set us up for our morning's paddle. We've um, packed everything away, cleared up, got, uh, got our bags in a pile ready for this big portage. So it's off to Lake Rugen. <laughs> on the water after our little our little stroll this morning <laughs> and it's nice to be floating again yeah it's uh, absolutely gorgeous this morning the sun's shining there's a few clouds about but it's lovely and warm but not too warm for paddling there's a bit of a breeze which we're paddling into at the moment it's not too bad but you know it's there you know so we're just going to cross over to the other side of the uh, the bit that we're on. This is a kind of a finger of the of the bigger lake, um, and we're going to follow that bit of that bit of headland around, and then we'll be into the into the lake itself. And I think we're going to follow that headland around on the other side before we actually cross over to the Norwegian side. We'll probably stop and have some lunch before we cross because it is a it is a bit of a crossing, and we'll sort of uh, gauge it with what the wind is doing. Absolutely fantastic.
Well done, mate. That was a tough paddle. We've got to where we wanted to stop for lunch. Um, it's marked on the map as a picnic site. Um, and there's a fire pit here and some, some kind of rough benches and uh, a load of logs. And um, there's, uh, there's enough sort of flattish areas where you can put a tent up or hang a hammock up between trees. Quite a nice little spot. Um, that paddle was, was tough going. Uh, when we left, um, where the hut was that we didn't manage to get in last night um, and put into the water this morning, it, was, um, it wasn't too bad, you know? It was quite sheltered. It's a kind of an inlet, um, kind of lobe of water protected from, from the wind. Um, and as soon as we, we cornered that, um, that headland and, uh, and crossed into the main lake, it was, it was just much windier and very hard to kind of keep the, keep the canoe in a straight line and battle with the wind. Um, it was hard enough. For me, Andy, Andy found it a real struggle. You know, he doesn't get out in the canoe as often as I do. Probably only every, you know, year, year and a half, two years maybe. Um, so yeah, it was it was just tough, tough going by anybody's standards. Um, we're going to stop here and have a bit of lunch. We've still got a long paddle to go. We're going to have a well earned little break and rest here um, for a good hour or so, I think, before we even consider, you know, carrying on. Lunch with a view. Can't argue with that. Mm -mm. It was worked for though. <laughs>
we're almost across the lake to the to the southern shore um, it's been it's been a real slog we've been fighting a headwind the whole way um, and he's and he's been having difficulties uh, the, the, the wind has just been turning him and um, it's really hard to turn back around again and face into wind because you're just you know once you're sort of broadside onto the wind it's, it's just hard to, to turn and point the, the front of the boat into the wind again it's a little bit less windy on this side um, and I think as we get closer to the to the shore here uh, we should be in the lee of the hills um, on that southern side and it should be less windy and a bit more a bit more manageable and then I think we're just going to wind our way along the southern I was going to say coast then <laughs> it feels like a sea um, along that southern southern shore and find somewhere to uh, to camp get across the border into Norway would be good the uh, the fire rules are different in Norway to, to what they are in Sweden um, you're allowed to have a small cooking fire so um, that would be really good I mean last night was all right with the twig stoves but a proper fire would be good we've got a fire grate with us you've just got a bit more control when you can have bigger embers you know and, and move things around and, and it's just a bit easier to cook yeah but we are nearly across this big old body of water Well, we uh, got across and, and paddled just along a um, hundred yards or so and uh, found a camp spot, <laughs> like uh, one of the picnic sites on the other side. There's a fire pit, um, there's wood, there's even a composting toilet uh, over in the distance over there, um, and nobody else is here. Uh, we're still in Sweden, but we're only about a kilometre and a half from the Norwegian border. So I think we're just going to stop here. We're, we're, we're both knackered, you know, that, that was a long, hard paddle across the lake there into the wind. So um, we're going to stop here and it's, you know, it's, it's set up. It's, it's uh, nice and easy for us. There's plenty of trees for us to hang hammocks, hammocks from. We can have a fire, we can cook and um, yeah, we can just relax and enjoy the evening. I didn't film putting all this up because, well, you've, you've seen that in the past two videos, um, so I didn't want to get too repetitive. <laughs> Plus, uh, it's a lot quicker when I haven't got a film. So I'm set up there, I've got poles, uh, poles, paddles, to uh, just hold the front of the tarp up there. Give me a bit more airflow, because I'm on a slope. Got my socks up there drying, and I've got a nice view 
down to uh, where we're going to be cooking and having a fire later on. Andy's set up down there somewhere in his in his amok as well. Yeah, nice spot overlooking the mighty Lake Rugen. We've sawn up a load of logs. That's the nice thing about these uh, designated spots here in Sweden. The uh, logs are supplied. There's usually a big pile of them. Um, so we've just cut up some rounds and split them down. So we've got some smaller bits to get started. And um, the logs are all birch. <laughs> so your tinder is there as well. So I'm just scraping up a bit of this birch bark here. I've got some other finer bits here and um, we'll get this fire lit. Now I've got a load of twigs which I've just picked up off the floor. There's loads of twigs lying around everywhere and they're all bone dry. While the fire is doing its thing and creating us some nice embers, I'm just going to prepare our veg. So we've got um, an onion and a pepper like we had last night in our pasta. But we've got rice tonight and some mixed beans to go in it and a special ingredient which I'll show you in a minute. And then also to go in our rice dinner, we've got this lump of uh, cured reindeer steak, which I'm just going to chop up into chunks and that will, um, that will go in there as well. I'll probably just cook this up with the veg, fry it up, and then um, can mix that in with our, with our rice, which I'm going to season with stock and then chuck the beans in as well. Got a carton of beans here, which I'm just going to chuck in as well. It can heat up. That's the last of the rice that's cooked. And then with the reindeer and the veg.
smoke right. Nolan's Gould. Yummy. Well, what a day today has been. We've had that big portage this morning, which we had to do three times. Three times? Yeah, three times. <laughs> and then we've just been battling against the wind all day long. It wasn't so bad to begin with while we're in that sheltered section, but as soon as we rounded that headland, we've been just battling against it all day. Probably four, maybe five hours constantly into the wind. <laughs> it is exhausting. And we are exhausted. Andy has gone to bed. Um, he's, yeah, he's he's had a bad run of luck actually during this trip so far. Um, he left his he left his jacket, his coat, um, at our first campsite. Didn't realise till we got to the campsite last night. And obviously, you know, it was just too far to go back and get it. Um, which he's absolutely gutted about. Not only was it a new coat? <laughs> but it's his only coat, so that is his waterproof. Um, he has got another kind of thin insulated coat with him, but that was his, you know, that was his main coat. So um, that's that's not great. Um, hopefully the the weather will stay off. I think we we're due for a little bit of rain overnight um, into into Saturday, like early hours of Saturday morning. But hopefully that will have stopped by the time we get up and we're um, you know we're needing to get out on the water. Um, so that was the first thing. Then his drone has stopped working and um, you know he had plans for, for clips to do um, using his drone. I've got mine so I think we're gonna you know gonna work out and, and kind of share it and <laughs> do what we can do so we can get some shots. Um, but worse than that is um, this evening when we got here he was going through his um, his video clips on his on his main camera and um, it seems that a lot of files, well all of them prior to today are missing um, off his SD card. I mean, they're showing, but they're not, they're not readable, um, which is a huge worry because that's kind of, you know, two full days of, of paddling and, and the camps and, and everything, which, I mean, hopefully he hasn't lost them. I'm, you know, maybe when he gets home, they'll be, they'll be retrievable, but um, yeah, not good. And then add to that the, <laughs> the torture of today's paddle. I mean, it was, you know, yeah, it was knackering by, by anybody's, by anybody's standard. Um, but, um, you know, Andy doesn't paddle that frequently and he really struggled with it today. You wouldn't imagine this is the same lake because it is as still as you like now. It's like an, it's just still like a mill pond. Why couldn't it have been like that when we were paddling over? <laughs> Absolute bonus that we found this this spot where we are though. Um, you know we've had a fire this evening which has been lovely. Had a couple of beers and, and some uh, some good grub. Yeah, simple grub, just you know rice and beans and and veggies and that delicious reindeer meat, which really made it. That was the star of the show for sure. Yeah, and um, yeah, just a really nice peaceful spot on this kind of 
almost sort of like a, a jutty outy kind of lobe, um, rocky lobe that sticks out into the lake. And then right next to it is a, a kind of almost like a bay with an island bang in the middle of it. It's really, really pretty, really nice. Yeah, good little spot. What a bonus that we got it to ourselves. <sighs> yeah. I'm going to um, have a little tidy up here, get some things put under cover or um, in barrels, just in case we're not due for any rain overnight, but just in case, you know, things could still get a bit damp. So yeah, I'm going to have a little tidy up and then go and hit the sack. So I'll see you guys in the morning. Good night. Trip. No, tell me about it.